Hey guys, this is Test 41 Game 1. This is the Closet Hangers game. It's an ordering game. We know this because the second line of the initial paragraph says order. We've got six dresses, one to six. The rules are regarding specific numbered hangers, one through six. So I've laid them out down here. Now I've drawn the rules, but I'm going to explain all of them. We've got the six hangers, six uh, dresses, GLP, RSW, and we're placing them on hangers numbered one through six. We've got the first rule G is before P, so I put G dash P right here. We've got R is on one or six, so I put R slash and slash R on one and six. We've got either W or S on three, so I put W slash S on the third slot. We've got S is to the immediate, L is the immediate right of S, so I've got an SL box in that order. So I placed a couple of little restrictions here. If G is before P, we know G cannot be 6 and P cannot be 1. If L is before L, S is, if S is before L, we know S cannot be 6, L cannot be 1. So just a few little restrictions there. This is our initial setup for the game. Not too much to do in, way, in the way of inferences. We will do more over the course of the game itself. Now question number one is a typical orientation question. You just want to take one rule at a time and apply that rule to all five choices looking for violations. So we could take the fact that G has to go before P, if we scan through all five choices, we find that choice C violates this, having P before G. Unacceptable, C is eliminated. Next, we could take that S is immediately before L, and in that order, we find that choice D violates this, having L immediately before S, reversing it, so D is eliminated. Next, we could take that R has to be on either 1 or 6, and we find that choice E violates this, having R on 2, so E is gone down to A and B. We can now use the remaining rule, W slash S on 3, and we find that choice B violates this having G on 3. So B is gone, leaving A by elimination for number 1. Next, number 2, if S and G are both on odd-numbered hangers, what must be true? So a few different ways this could play out, right? I mean, we could have G on 1 or G on 5. Of course, G cannot be on 3 because WRS has to be on 3. Now, if G's on 1, we could still have S or W on 3, and if G is on 5, we could still have S or W on 5. So we're actually going to have a number of different possibilities here. I'm going to sketch them out really quickly. You don't have to do all of this, of course. You could just draw one diagram and see if it works for you, but I'm going to try and be more comprehensive here just for purposes of explaining in the game. So we could have G on 1 and S on 3, or G on 1 and W on 3, or G on 5, and S on 3, and G on 5, or W on 3. Now, we have the SL restriction, of course. So if S is on 3, we will have L on 4. If S is on 3 again, we will have L on 4. If G is on 5, we have to have P on 6 in both of these diagrams, leaving R to be on 1 in both of these diagrams. So from there, we, can, we still have a lot to place. I mean, we've got the SL restriction. We don't know where exactly that's happening on this second diagram, except for the fact that if G is on 1, R has to go on 6. So now we know that in the second diagram, we're going to have S on 4 and L on 5, leaving P to go on 1. In the top diagram, we could have P or W interchangeable on 2 and 5. It's not fully determined, but pretty much. In the third diagram, of course, we have W remaining to go on 2. And in the bottom diagram, we have, let's see, we got, who's, who's left? We got S and L, but that's not going to work because we have W on 3. S and L could be on 2 and 4, but there is no room for that to happen. So for that reason, this bottom diagram has to be eliminated due to its violation of that rule. We're left with these three to work with, all of which seem to be valid. We could just do a run through again. G before P in all of them were good. S immediately before L in all of them were good. R is on either 1 or 6 in all of these. And of course, we have S or W on 3 in all of these. So it all checks out. This is every possibility for when we have G and S on odd numbered hangers. G and S on odd numbered hangers. Except, of course, this diagram right here isn't checking out because we have to have. S on an odd numbered hanger, not an even numbered one, so this one is also eliminated. So now that we eliminate those two, these are our only two remaining valid possibilities for the game. 
So what could be true? Could P be on 1? No, we have either G or R on 1. A is eliminated. Could we have W on 2? Yes, in both of these it is possible to have W on 2, so B is our answer. I will look at the rest though. P on 4? No, we have to have L on 4. That's gone. Next, uh, looking at D, L on 5, no L's on 4, that's gone. And then E, W on 6, no R or P's on 6, that's gone, leaving B if you didn't get it before. Next, number 3, if S is on an even-numbered hanger. So right away, we know that we're going to have W on 3, and then think about where else S could go. I mean, it's kind of open-ended, but they're saying, what, what could be immediately two S's left? So where could we fit an S, L, box as we need to right here. I mean, we could throw it down on 4 and 5. It's possible. Of course, it could be on 5 or 6 or maybe 1 or 2. We don't know. A few different possibilities. But this one right here happens to demonstrate that we could have W immediately to its left. Everything else checks out. Just to prove it to you, I will put R on 1. I'll put G on 2. And then I'll put P on 6. It checks out. So for that reason, E W is our answer to number three. If P is on two, what must be true? So if P is on two, of course, we have to have G on one because G always goes before P. That would leave R to go on six. The other stuff is not yet determined, but that's okay. This is a must be true question. And we find that R on six is a must as well as G on one. Of course, they didn't ask us G on one, but they do ask R on six. So E is our answer to number four. Next, number five general cannot be true question. We don't really know what they're going to ask here. Let's just run through the choices. Could L be immediately next to G? We actually saw that back in our work for number two. We could have had L on four and G on five, perhaps. That could have checked out. So for that reason, A is eliminated. For B, P immediately to the right of R, meaning could we ever have RP? as a box in that particular order. No, because if that had to happen, we'd have R on 1 and P on 2, but then how could we have G before P? It just wouldn't work. So B is impossible, and therefore our answer for number 5, I will look at the rest though, R immediately to the left of W. So they're saying R, W, no reason that couldn't work. We could have R on 1, W on 2, S on 3, L on 4, G on 5, P on 6, that would work out fine. So C is gone. S lower number than G, simply meaning S dash G. And then, of course, it continued to dash P because G is always before P. We'd have to have S, L as a box because S and L are always touching in that particular order. Anything seem wrong about this? Not really. Seems to check out fine. Then E, W higher than R. Simply meaning R is before W. No particular reason to think that couldn't work. We actually saw it in my example right up here, so E's gone. If you want me to draw a diagram for number for choice uh, D, I could do that real quick. We could have, um, let's see, S, L on 1, 2. We could have W on 3, G, P on 5, 6, R on 4. No, that wouldn't work. But we could put instead G, P on 4, 5, and R on 6. That would check out perfectly fine. S, L, W, G, P, R. We got G before P, we got SL as a box, we got R on 6, we got WRS on 3. It all works out, so we can actually eliminate D fir firmly if you like. Next, number 6, what cannot touch R? So the first thing we could do is use previous work to eliminate stuff. Looking back at question number 1, choice A, with the correct answer there, we had R on 6, P on 5, so P can be eliminated, C is gone for this question. Let's look back at other previous work. Back in question 2, we had a diagram with R on 6 and W on 5, so W can be eliminated, E is gone. We also had from that question R on 1, W on 2, but of course that's redundant, we just talked about that, so that's not going to help us out. So now I'm going to start thinking about which variables are particularly limited. If you look at the list that we have remaining, G, L, S. G simply before P, L and S are both involved in this box, and a box is more limiting than a general ordering, so I want to use S and L for this reason. Now, S is even more limited than L because it's also involved in 3, that rule about W slash S on 3, so for that reason, I'm going to think about S at first. If we had R on 1, S on 2, we'd have to have L on 3, but we actually need to have W or S on 3, so that wouldn't work. I'll try R on 6, S on 5, 
But then how can I satisfy the SL box right here? It just wouldn't work. There's no room for it. We can't squeeze it in between 5 and 6. So for that reason, S actually can never touch R. And for that reason, D is our answer to number 6. Next, number 7, we're changing the rules here. We're going to have an SL box being changed now to an SW box. This is the new rule. This one no longer applies. It's no longer relevant. We're going to have to satisfy SW now. Now, given that we have to have either W or S on 3, there's two ways that could play out. Either we have S on 3 and W on 4, or we have W on 3 and S on 2. G before P still applies. R on 1 or 6 still applies. But this is the new state of affairs. We don't know too much about what to do here, but we can just run through the choices regarding what must be false. Now, of course, must be false means could be true except. Find the four things that could work. Eliminate them. Whatever remains is our answer. And of course, by the way, that not L on 1, not S on 6 no longer applies. It's now not S on 6, not W on 1. So the choice is, could L be on 1? Previously, it could not have been on 1, but now it could because we got rid of that restriction. L could go anywhere now. So for that reason, A is gone. Could we have G on 2? Yeah, seems fine. I mean, it can't be on 2 when S is on 2, but on the top diagram, we could have G on 2, P on 5 or 6, and then R on 1 or 6, so B is gone. Could we have W on 4? No, W's, W could be on 4 on top, so that checks out. C is gone. S on 5? No, S is on 2 or 3. This cannot be true. So D is our answer to number 7. I will look at E, though. P on 6? Yeah, P could basically be anywhere as long as it's after G, so E is eliminated, leaving D if you didn't get it before.